Just make this quick, boys, and keep it quiet. Move it, boys. Let's keep it moving. Come on. Damn it. Watch it. We're out of time. Load them up. Let's get out of here. Come on, Pity. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Speaking of going, hold on. Don't make me come in there and get you. I'm coming. I'm coming. What took you so long? When you gotta go, you gotta go. Get in the back. Close. Hey, one of you guys close together. Come on. Oh man. Good hunt. Where have you guys been? I don't know. Ask Dad. Well, did you at least get a tree? Sort of. It's in a box in the backseat of our car. Great. Go inside. Monica's waiting for you. Hi, honey. Oh, you look great. I'm sorry I'm late. I got hung up on the mountain making some... Mark, you know how important this night was for me. I'm sorry. I know. I'm sorry. I heard you got a tree. Yeah, it's still in the car. Yes, in a box. That's the way I like it. Oh, Mark. You know, we've already missed Senator Broward's introduction speech. Terrific. Thank you, Senator Broward, for that eloquent speech. We are truly blessed to have you here with us. Today. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Hazelville Recreation Department, I'd like to welcome you all here to tonight's festivities. First, I, I want to thank all those people whose efforts helped make tonight possible. First off, so where's Matthew? He's at the bar, getting his date is really Temple. <laughs> hey, did Dusty manage to get himself a date? Come on, Helen. We both know there's not a girl in the entire county who'd go out with a guy. <laughs> Shh, here he comes. Hey, there he is. Hi, Dusty. You look 
good. You look really good. Thanks. My dad let me borrow this. He says it's a real babe magnet. I'm sure it is. <laughs> hey, there you guys are. Hi, guys. Hey, Mr. Cody. Hi, Monica. You look so cute together. Can I take your picture? Oh, that's great. Wow, Monica, that's a nice dress you have on there. Whatever, you creep. Just stay away from me. My sister told me all about you, you weirdo. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you a very special, very wealthy man, <laughs> the financial backer of Hazelville's new ski resort, Hazelville's own Mr. Douglas Dougie Style. Oh my god, I don't believe it. You know him? <laughs> it's Dougie. It's Dougie Style. Thank you. Please, you're embarrassing me. Thank you. I can't believe that we went to high school together. Listen, I'm... I'm not very good at making speeches, so I'm going to keep my remarks short. Uh, thank you, Mayor Swindell, and, uh, and thank you, Senator Broward, for a very successful campaign and a very expensive one. <laughs> Look at him. He hasn't changed a bit. I just want to say that I built this ski resort as a holiday gift for the people of this town, which just happens to be my hometown. <laughs> my God, it is so good to see so many familiar faces. And I'd just like to say that um, I hope that this resort brings the same joy to countless others. Thanks very much. He was the coolest guy in the entire school. I mean, the girls were just crazy for him. I don't think there was a girl in the whole school that wasn't madly in love with him. <laughs> so, were you one of the ones who was madly in love with him? Heavens no, I don't even think he knew I existed. Helen, is that you? Helen, it is you! Helen! <laughs> oh, do, 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 do. You look sensational. My God, the last time I saw you was uh, senior prom. Man, what a night that was. Say, uh, did you ever get rid of that rash thing? <laughs> <laughs> Dougie, I want you to meet my husband, Matt, my husband, Mark, and my son, Matthew. Hey, sport, how you doing? It's good to see you. Hi. Oh, man, who ever would have thought that hot and heavy Helen would turn out to be a wife and a uh, mom? Uh, yeah, so, Dougie, are you married? Oh, no, uh, I have a daughter, Darla. She just finished her last semester in college. Oh, really? Yeah. I've had to bring her up all by myself after after my wife died. Oh, Dougie, I'm so sorry. It's been rough, but, you know, I, I can't complain. Being a millionaire has its perks, <laughs> if you know what I'm... I'm sorry. <laughs> so what are you doing now? Oh, I'm just uh, financing small projects just like this one. It looks like uh, Senator Broward needs a little help from me. <laughs> hey, are you kids going to Winterfest tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Mark's the head uh, ranger, and he oversees the event every year. Uh-huh. Well, then I guess I'm going to see your kids at Winterfest. Oh, you're going to get a chance to meet Darla. Oh, good. I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, it's been great to meet all of you. Good to meet you, sport. And uh, for you, lady. Party. He's such so sweet sorrow. <laughs> right, we'll see you tomorrow. What? Hot and heavy, Helen. I thought you said you didn't even know the guy. Mark, you sound jealous. Why didn't you ever tell me about him? Mark, that was a long time ago, and what happened between Dougie and I was just a, a physical thing. Physical? You understand. 
<laughs> just look good. Oh, there's that look again. Come on, Mark. That was a long time ago. Besides, who am I dancing with now? I, I, when is this going to end already? Step. I mean, you ruined my dress now. Oh, Helen, I'm sorry. I missed my step. It was an Mark, accident. I want to go home. I, I it was an accident. Home. Helen. Cody. I'm Ranger Cody. We're wondering if we might have a word with you. Who are you people? We're from the National Forestry Service. The NFS? I am Agent Royce, and this is Agent Bentley. We want to talk to you about the tree incident that took place here last summer. Matthew, take the tree inside. I, I, I'm sorry, but I thought I gave everything you needed in that report. In fact, I know I did. If you read it, you'll see for yourself. We did read it, Cody. That's why we're here. We'd like to find out a little bit more about what you think you saw. What I think... Don't you people think it's a little late to be conducting business? Miss Cody, perhaps we didn't make ourselves clear. Your husband made some rather interesting allegations. Oh, no, excuse me, but perhaps I didn't make myself clear. I don't know where you people are from, but around here, we do not harass people in the middle of the night. Helen! No, Mark, enough. Enough! My husband has had enough. He is finally getting his life together. Do you know what it's like to sleep with a grown man who wets the bed? <laughs> Mark's psychiatrist said he's finally making great progress. And now you people come along, and he'll be conjuring up those images again to support this tree-phobia thing. He doesn't need that. He doesn't need that. Mrs. Cody, all we want... I don't care what you want. What I want is for you to leave my husband alone. And now I'd like you to leave our property before I call the police. Okay, Miss Cody, there's Let's no go. need for that. Roy, come on. We don't need that. Let's go. I'm sorry. Well, he's not going to talk. Still, we're going to keep an eye on him. Give me those files again. There's always this guy. Max Cooper. This is Max Cooper from the New York Botanical Institute. This is something I've never seen before. Oh, my God. The pine needles... The branches indicate a large tree attack. The smoke emanating from the front of the vehicle indicates radiator damage. Oh my god, the presence of sap. This, this is definitely, oh my god, yes. The pine needles in the front of the vehicle indicate a pine strobus attack. I'm about to open the door of the vehicle. Oh my god! Oh my god! Pinus strobus. Ladies and gentlemen, a rare species of flesh-hungry killer trees that's spreading like a murderous wave across America's dense forests. The Hazelville incident is only the latest example of a carnivorous tree taking human life. There's the well-documented U.S. tiger fly incident in Vietnam, in which 125 men lost their lives to a carnivorous tree. That's never been proven, Mr. Cooper. How about in 1969, when eight civilians were killed by a tree or trees in Yellowstone National Park? Wasn't that finally attributed to roaming deer? Wild deer? That was a National Forestry Service cover-up story. Each of those events happened within a 10-mile radius of an NFS quarantined area, just like these Hazelville deaths. You're not suggesting that... That the NFS is somehow involved with genetically enhanced killer trees? You bet I am. That's impossible. Evidence in all these cases points to a tree, specifically a great white pine in each instance, suddenly developing a taste for larger quantities of fresh meat. 
And as we all know, this is anomalous to most predatory trees. And in each instance, such a predator was too large for those given areas. Now, this could be a result of abnormally fast evolution or an extreme case of migratory uprooting. But a more likely explanation is artificial genetic enhancement, an enhancement that has proven to be a mistake, and genetic mistakes cannot be recalled. Now, you, the esteemed board members of this botanical institute, must at least accept the possibility that my thesis is correct. And being correct, you must consider endorsing my botanical rights charter, which would prevent any future such experimentation on innocent trees. Mr. Cooper, the video footage you showed us of the Hazelville incidents, the car wreck, it looked like nothing more than some cheap footage from some low-budget horror film. And the only so-called evidence that you offer is that one burnt twig and an altered autopsy. Or for cause of death, you literally scribbled out lawnmower and added tree attack. I can explain that. Even the esteemed Mayor Swindell of Hazelville has denied many of your so-called facts. In light of this overwhelming lack of credible evidence, how can we consider your presentation to be anything more than flights of fancy, to put it mildly? I know what I've seen. It's not part of nature. The NFS may be performing genetic engineering of trees and is responsible for the deaths of hundreds, if not thousands, maybe millions of people. Mr. Cooper, mind your tongue. You are aware, aren't you, that the NFS is the primary source of funding for this botanical institute? Why, for this board to accept your ridiculous suggestions would be, would be economic suicide. Mr. Cooper, you are a talented and energetic young man, and this board would not like to have to dismiss you from your position here. Please reconsider your facts and amend your report to reflect a more reasonable conclusion. But I... Mr. Cooper, we've heard enough. We have better things to do, namely holiday shopping, than listen to your rants. This meeting is adjourned. Professor Cavanaugh, do you have a moment? Certainly, Max. Uh, how did it go with the board? Those people are fools. I show them clear-cut evidence of a threat of man-eating trees, and they just scoff. I warned you not to come on too strong. You have to spoon-feed them. Nurture them. Establish solid roots in your arguments, then grow from there. In other words, have the patience of a plant. Do you see this acorn? This is a very special acorn. Years ago, I was a research scientist for the National Forestry Service. I conducted experiments on the relationship between energy and trees. The results were astounding. I managed to capture the entire life cycle of a living tree inside a dormant acorn. I had created the ultimate biological weapon. It was dubbed the Seed of Destruction. Fearing the potential dangers if it should fall into the wrong hands, I stole the acorn and fled. That's when several rogue NFS agents showed up and demanded that I hand over the acorn or face certain death. The results of these experiments became far different and much more dangerous than I ever expected. My life was at stake and so was the fate of the world. I had no choice but to use the weapon to save my life. To this day, no documents have been located which confirm the event, or any interest by the NFS in attempting to recover the acorn. Wow. I want you to have this acorn, so that you'll never forget that perseverance pays off. I'll cherish this forever. Max, why don't you take some time off? You've just got to learn to give it a rest. You're right, Professor Kavanaugh. Thank you so much. And Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, Max. Where the hell did you find these? 
There's not a single decent tree left in the valley. I told you we'd take care of you, Mr. Greenshaw. <laughs> they are beautiful, aren't they? Oh, the beautiful fang. Absolutely beautiful. You did it. I don't know how, but you did it. And remember our deal. $15 a tree. Hey, guys, take it easy with those, huh? Okay. Oh, Lord. It was Mrs. Tannenbaum. Oh, my God. Hell. Mrs. Tannenbaum, what brings you out on this beautiful day? There's nothing beautiful about today, Charlie. I've just come to get my Christmas tree. Have you put one aside for me? Oh, yes, of course. Why, Fang just brought in the finest this town has ever seen. Oh, don't bore me with your trivial details, Charlie. I expect for someone to deliver a tree to my house this afternoon with fresh pine needles on it. And not after five. I eat my supper. At five. Fanny, have one of your men bring a tree by our house later on this afternoon. Yeah, right. Move it, boys. Watch it. Oh. Cody! Damn it! Welcome to Hazelville. You in town for the holidays? Yes, yeah, so I have friends up here. Oh, friends. It's lovely. Now, me, I'm spending Christmas with my two old buddies, Jack Daniels and Tom Collins. <laughs> Max, hey, Max. Matthew, how's it going? Great. Max. Cody. It's good to see you. Good to see you. How was your trip? Not bad. Not bad at all. So, uh, where's Helen? Helen? I'd love to see her. It's been a while. Oh, she's up at the slopes for the big Hazelville Winterfest. Oh. Come on, let me show you. Can I help you with a bag? Sure. Thanks. Dad. Dad, can I go unlock the car? Yeah, sure. Here, go ahead. Cody, thanks for letting me come up and spend the holidays with you. I really appreciate it. I just needed to get away from it all. Oh, I know what you mean. Look, Max, it really is good to see you. And we're glad to have you. How are you doing, otherwise? I mean, since the incident. Well, pretty good, I guess. It was a little tough at first. Helen enrolled me in one of those tree phobia support groups. She even had me start a garden. <laughs> I think it's helped me move on. That's great to hear. Besides, I take comfort in knowing you're out there, making sure nothing like that will ever happen again. Dougie Styles. Hey, how are you doing? I know who he is. <sighs> Dougie and I were just looking at everything he's done here. Yeah, yeah, we sort of built this place from the ground up. <laughs> I'm sure chopping down all those innocent trees made you feel good about yourself. Uh, you'll have to excuse Max. He's a botanist from New York City. Oh, well, they don't have trees in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> Some, no thanks to developers like you. Oh, well, that was a little harsh. Uh, well, at least I have some excitement in my job. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you ever tried to outrun a 70-foot-tall screaming mahogany monolith with branches the wingspan of a 747? 
I'm sorry? There are surprises that lurk in those woods. As a matter of okay, fact, Okay, anyway, summer... Dougie, you know I haven't met that daughter of yours. Can you... Oh, Darla, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, you know, Brody, could I have a talk with you for a minute? Cody. Cody, I'm, I'm rotten with names. It all take a minute. Sure. Listen, Dodie, I was hoping that you could help me out. Uh, it's about my daughter, Darla. She's a great kid, but she's a little, well, high-strung, and she needs constant supervision, and I'd like to spend some time with Helen. You know what I mean. So I was wondering if you could uh, keep an eye on her. Uh, Darla, I mean. Yeah, sure, I guess. Well, thanks. I really appreciate it. Ranger, they found an abandoned campsite on the south slope of the mountain. It's loaded with expensive equipment. All right, just give me a minute. Hey, Dusty, come here. I'll have my deputy see to it that your daughter gets whatever attention she needs. Uh, thanks, Cody. Hey, I got it right. Dusty, you remember Mr. Stiles from last night? Sure do. How could I forget? Yeah, me too. How'd you like to keep an eye on Mr. Stiles' daughter while I check out an abandoned campsite? Sure, no problem. Thanks. Excuse me. So, oh, which one's your daughter? Uh, oh, um, uh, ch uh, she's around. Daddy, Daddy, over here, honey. Daddy, over where? Now, just follow my voice. You can do this. Come on. Daddy, come on. I'm over here. Mr. Stiles, huh? if it's okay with you, I'll just go over there and introduce myself. Go ahead. Hey there. Just thought I'd come over and introduce myself. My name's Dusty, and I'm the uh, deputy ranger here. Excuse me, are you talking to me? Well, I'm standing right in front of you, ain't I? Boy, what, are you blind or something? <gasps> Speaking of blind, did you ever hear the one about the blind guy who goes into the bar and orders a drink? Oh, excuse me. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, would you hold on just a minute? Hey, listen, you can't bring three poles on the lift. It's against the rules. I think you're going to have to leave one here. Hi there. Welcome to Mount Hazelville. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. I tried telling her she can't bring three poles on the lift. But she won't listen to me. This guy for real? Yeah. Obviously, some people don't even bother to read the rules, even though they're posted right there on the wall in big red letters. They do. She's blind. Blind? Yeah. You're blind? You obviously aren't too bright. Well, you are wearing glasses. So does Stevie Wonder, so I'm told. Are you sure you can do this? Look, I don't care what my father told you. I don't need your help. Besides, I've got my cane to help me. See you at the bottom, Dusty. Stevie Wonder's blind? Ranger Cody, over here. What do you got? Several city types and a hunting trip. Plenty of gear thrown about, but no sign of the campers. Everything okay? Don't you want to take a look? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I got a call from this city gal. Says she hasn't heard from her husband. Says he went off on a hunting trip with a few of his buddies. Lost, I'd say. Not robbed, anyway. Do you have any idea how much gear like this costs? No. Is that blood? Probably. Plenty of beer cans, about two. My guess is they bagged a deer, got drunk, and wandered off into those woods. Yeah. I guess I'm gonna have to establish a search party. I don't know, Dusty. Something just doesn't feel right about this. How do they just vanish into thin air? What about that camera you found? Oh, yeah. Why don't you take it down to Harry's and have it developed? I'll take it tomorrow morning. Hey, Dusty, come here. Give me a hand.
Let me drag this out. What is it? I have no clue. It appears that we're stuck. Eh. You just gotta kickstart the generator. It's nothing important, I'm sure. Come on, let's get out of here. Look, how long is it gonna take that idiot crew to get this contraption moving again? Ah, uh, you know, the crew's away for the weekend. Yeah, man, holiday shopping. And plus, even if they were down there, we ain't going anywhere. Uh, why's that? Because I have the keys to the maintenance shed! <laughs> to report that Senator Chad Broward has died from an apparent ski accident on the slopes of Mount Hazelville. The initial investigation rests in the hands of Head Ranger Mark Cody, who declined to speak on camera. What should be a time of holiday cheer has now become a time of mourning. Bobby, we really gotta get control of this crowd. Hello? Ranger Sorry. Cody? Yes. We'll be handling this investigation from here on. Who the hell are these people? With the NFS officer, federal agents. The death of the United States Center is a federal case, so we have complete jurisdiction here. Will you tell him to stop taking those photographs? We're going to have to confiscate that film as well. Look, this is my mount. This may be your mountain, Ranger Cody. This happens to be our case. We're going to have to ask you to leave the scene immediately. We'll take help from here. Excuse me. What do you think you're doing? Collecting samples. Well, you're gonna have to stop collecting samples because this is an NFS quarantine area. NFS? What are you doing here? Look, we're just leaving. Come on, Max. Cody, hold on a second. Don't you think it's a little odd the NFS has an interest in such a suspicious death? There's nothing suspicious about this. It's obviously an accident due to wind shear. That's how he died. I disagree completely. The senator's wounds were obviously inflicted by a tree collision. And what makes you so sure of that, Mr. Cooper. Max Cooper. Ah, Max Cooper. The infamous Max Cooper. I've read your work. I find your preoccupation with killer trees to be quite creative. Look around you. There's not a tree nearby. There are no footprints coming or going. Look at his face. And you're trying to cover it up. Why? Mr. Cooper, evidence is paramount to any proper investigation. The tree branch marks themselves are the real evidence. Cody, it's another killer tree. I'm sure of it. Get this nut out of my sight. It's a conspiracy. A conspiracy, I tell you. They're going to be after you. They're after all of us. Look, Max, there's enough going on around here, and I don't want things to get out of control like the last time. we got to keep our heads here. Look, it's Christmas, and you're on vacation. It's almost getting dark, so why don't you take Helen and Matthew home for me? Keep an eye on them. Are you sure I can't help you out? Max... Help me out big time if you take Helen and Matthew home. Okay. But remember to look for large deposits of shed pine needles. It's a sure sign of Pinus strobus. That was a great meal, uh huh? So, you two knew each other during high school? Oh, yeah. We were hotter than. Two fiery coals on the seventh <laughs> ring of hell. Mom! <laughs> oh, God, Matthew, don't mind him. He's just bragging. God, Dougie, you're incorrigible. Oh, well, we were. I'm home. <laughs> hey, Cody. Hey, Mark. I didn't think you'd be home. Did you miss your home cooking? I'm starved. I haven't eaten all day. Hey, Cody, you know, you just missed the most terrific meal. Oh, I'm sorry. If I knew that you were coming home, I wouldn't have snarfed down the last bite. Helen, amazing. You cook just as good as you look. Delicious. <laughs> so, uh, Cody, any sign of those missing hunters? No, nothing. 
Mom, are we still going to the tree lighting? Oh, the tree lighting. You know what? We almost have time to make it. Well then, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Listen, we can use my car. It's just outside. Great. I haven't even eaten yet. Yeah, come on, Max. Let's go. Okay, okay. I'm hurried. Helen, come on. Let's go. Okay. Come on. Okay, I'm coming. Aren't you coming? Ringing my bell this late at night. How am I supposed to bring this tree in by myself? Well, I guess if you want something done, you have to do it yourself. Happy holidays, everyone. The annual Hazelville tree lighting ceremony is underway. Despite the cold weather, record crowds have shown up for the gala event. The Honorable Mayor Jim Swindell is on hand to commemorate the most memorable night of the holiday season. Boy, I hope they save some hot chocolate for me. And so, we light this festive tree in celebration of all our winter holidays. Junior, if your mother hasn't bought me a present yet, tell her to get me one of those grinding stones. I can't seem to find mine anywhere. Okay, Dad. Do you remember you get that tree to Mrs. Tannenbaum? Criminy. No. What? <laughs> Hi. Hi, Mark. I brought you some hot chocolate. Hey, thank you. <laughs> so what's so funny? Sorry. No, 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 no. Nothing. Just a holiday <laughs> cheer. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's helping Monica pass out candy canes. Are you planning on joining them? No. Oh. But I was planning on getting some dinner. Oh. <laughs> I don't want any trouble. Excuse me? I was hoping for a little holiday truce. Oh, so you're playing the good cop then? I guess I can't blame you for thinking that. Blame me? Look, the NFS has never been on my top. Hey, wait. You know, we're not all like that 60 Minute show makes us out to be. We're not all cloak and dagger, top secret agents. I mean, I, I for one, really want to know what happened today. What makes you think that the senator actually died from tree wounds? Call it an educated guess. After you've been working with trees as long as I have, you can tell when they do something wrong. You know, you sound exactly like my father. Your father? John Bentley. The John Bentley. Legendary botanical explorer? Yeah. <laughs> I've read all of his work. And the man is absolutely brilliant. Whatever happened to him? He died. I'm sorry. You know, they say he, uh... He was working on some top secret project and... That's all they ever told me. You know what? <laughs> I am completely out of eggnog, and I probably should get going. Royce is going to be waiting on me, but okay. it was really nice talking to you, Max. Good night. Bye. Mayor Swindell, good evening. Good evening. I'd like to ask you about Squint. Squint? He's dead. You NFS guys know that. I do know that. It's just that, well, I'd like a more personalized account as opposed to a filled out form, if possible. No skin off my butt. Squint and a couple of other guys went and chased this rogue great white pine a few months ago. A man killer, or so they said. They chased it into the forest, and then it chased them, or so I heard. And then the showdown. Squint met his match, but uh, so did the tree. Seems the charter, Squint's client, did something even Squint couldn't do. Sent that great white pine to lumber hell, right where it belonged. Quite a brave feat. Oh yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Except for it was our uh, resident forest ranger over there. <laughs> Not exactly what you'd call a natural-born lumberjack, if you know what I mean. So, do you believe the story? <laughs> you kidding me? He trembles every time he sees a potted plant. So, uh... I'm not so sure. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, whatever. 
How can I leave my cellular phone and the other ski togs? Dude! Dude! Here, use mine! Give me that, you dunce! Oh, the battery's dead! <laughs> no! I, I have a spare battery! No, it's the dunce! 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 Somebody noticed the front door and called us. Uh, we found Miss Tenenbaum over here. God! It appears as if someone broke into Miss Tenenbaum's house, murdered her, and, and then stole her tree. That's ridiculous! Look at all the pine needles! It's obvious to me what happened here. Well then why don't you tell us what happened here, you damn tree hugger! Mrs. Tenenbaum awoke in the middle of the night by the sound of breaking ornaments. She made her way down those stairs over there into the living room. She probably thought it was her dog knocking the ornaments off the tree. She approaches the tree cautiously, and when she gets close enough, the tree lunges at her and kills her. And then it blows out the door over there. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard! Cody, get this guy out of here before he causes another killer tree panic! Right, Bobby, Max, you said we gotta keep our heads here. Now, just let's take this one step at a time. Cody, look at these needles. They are identical in size and shape to the ones I found near the senator's body. Max. Besides, these are the needles of a great white pine. Come on, Cody. We've seen this thing before. I think we just... Look, I have an idea. Why don't we go out to the site where we killed the Pinus strobus last summer? We might find something there. 
Max, not those woods. I just, I can't it's handle okay. it. I'll go by myself. It's the only way to be sure. No, 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 Cody, I'm not going to let this damn fool go out there. He's more trouble than he's worth. Bobby, Max, just let him go with you, just in case. Away. Jeez, Cody, you look like you've seen a ghost. Jim, I need to talk to you. What about? I think we have another tree problem. <laughs> Are you serious? Dead serious. That was a half-eaten, decapitated woman they just pulled out of here. And they haven't even found those hunters yet. Oh, come on, Cody. Nobody's seen a tree. Let's get realistic here. For Christ's sakes, Jim, a U.S. senator die on my slopes. An accident. And that's all. No tree, no bark, no nothing. Then why the sudden NFS involvement? It's a little odd, don't you think? Look, Cody, people disappear in those woods all the time. They're never heard from or seen again. That's what I'm told. So what are you going to tell me now? All those are tree attacks, huh? I think most of them probably are. Look, Cody, it is a well-known fact that the suicide rate goes up every Christmas. This sort of thing, it's to be expected. It means we're not going to do anything about it. Don't push it this time, Cody, okay? All right, Jim. But you just remember we had this conversation. Just remember it. And you just remember what your job is, mister. It is to keep that park open, hmm? Oh, by the way, one of the lifts on the back slope hasn't been working for the last couple of days. Why don't you find that good-for-nothing lift operator, tell him to go fix it, huh? Do your job. Still dead, but no signs of regeneration. Maybe I was wrong about post-severance animation. Maybe I was wrong about everything. Yeah, that's too bad. Let's get back, it'll be dark soon. Wait a minute. Do you know what this means? That you still haven't learned to mind your own business. What are you doing here? Mr. Cooper, have you learned nothing? I've learned plenty, so you won't have to worry about covering this one up. Max, we're not trying to cover anything up. I wish you could see that our interest here is strictly standard procedure. Standard, I bet. <laughs> You're not going to find anything in there. You guys knew about this place all along, didn't you? Officer, arrest this man for trespassing on private property. Private my taxpaying ass. National property belongs to all citizens. Max! Max, you're really not allowed in here. There are good reasons why this area is secure. Is that so? Why do you insist on causing problems? Causing problems? I'm trying to prevent problems. People need to know the truth for their own safety. Look! Look at this! Tree poachers were here. There must be dozens of trees missing. Fang. Fang poached these trees. It all makes sense. We've got to warn people. What are you doing? Roy, stop it! Royce. Post-severance animation! I knew I was right! Could you imagine what the defense department would pay us for these trees? Why shut up and help me free! No. If it takes our death to preserve the truth, then so be it! Over my dead body. <laughs> The 
It took Officer Bobby, too. Max. Can we put our differences aside for the time being and work together to help contain the situation? Only if you agree to bring back a living sample to test for its weaknesses. Okay. Deal. Carla, what's wrong? You again? What, did my daddy send you? No. I got a call about a beautiful damsel in distress. Yeah. Tell me, what's wrong? Well, it's my cane. I seem to have lost it while I was skiing. Gee, a white cane mm -hmm. here in the snow. In the snow. This won't be easy. What does color have anything to do with it? Uh, never mind. I'll help you look, uh, search for it. All right. Let's check over here. I have a good feeling about this area. Great idea. Over here. Right over here. Oh, hey, what? Oh, I think I got, I think I found it. Oh, it's... Oh, what? Oh my God! Oh, what is this? Ah! Could you please move back, folks? Please, just give us a little room. The police are on their way. Let's not contaminate the area. I caught you as soon as I got the news on this. The fights are big, really big. Jeez, what do you think? Could have been hit by a toboggan. But uh, first things first. You better check the root radius. Roots? From what? From the tree that did this. We don't know that yet. Well, that's what we're here to find out. Here, hold on to the end of this. What's the length? Six inches. Six inches? Thank you. Look, I know you're new around here. I've had some experience with trees. Oh, have you? Yeah. I think a great white pine might have done this. Pine is strong, they say. And what makes you think there might be one in these woods? Well, obviously something took a bite out of this. We all know that certain carnivorous trees are attracted to blood and the sounds people make when they enter the woods. And high pitches. High pitches? Yeah, high pitched tones. Like, um, bird calls and wind chimes. Then it is a tree. I didn't say that. Look, these wounds could have been inflicted by any number of things. For one thing, there are an awful lot of snowmobile accidents that go unreported. But this guy looks like he's been dead a couple of days. Excuse me. Hello, this is Cody. What film? Oh, the camper's camera. You're kidding. I'll be right there. Max, where the hell are you? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Harry. Oh, it's cold out there. All right. All right. Looks like they had a good time. Really? Yeah. Is this all you got? Uh, yeah, there's some uh, blurry ones at the end, though, in there. This is the one. Terrific. Thanks, Harry. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were so afraid. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. a tree from long ago, 2,000 years now, more or less, stood by a manger chilled with snow and witnessed how the world was blessed. That tree was there in... Come on, Cody. We've seen this thing before. That tree... Jeez, Cody, you look like you've seen a ghost. ...incense, myrrh, and gold. 
That tree had... These are the needles of a great white pine. That tree's... Come on, Cody, nobody's seen a tree. Let's get realistic here. That tree had... No tree, no, tree, no bark, no nothing. nothing. The tree had... The only way to be sure. The tree said to no harm. Get off the stage, everyone, get out of here, stop this deal! What are you doing, Ranger? What are you doing to my prop tree? Prop? This is artificial? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's okay, folks. My mistake, it's, it's a false alarm. Come on back, everyone. I'm sorry. It's my mistake. You can go on with the show. We can still go. Come on back, hon. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Monica. Mark, what the hell were you thinking? Helen, look at this. Harry just developed it from, from the camera of the missing hunters. It's the woods, isn't it? What is it, a squirrel? What are you talking about? I have no idea what this is. Take a look. The outline, the branches, the, the needles. It's a tree. Is that what you think this is? I don't see it, Mark. We don't see it. You think I don't know what a tree looks like? All right, all right, all right. Let's not jump to conclusions, hmm? Jump to conclusions? Cody, speaking to you as a friend, oh. for the safety of your family and yourself, I really think you ought to check into one of those really good mental institutions. Oh. Hell, I'll even foot the bill for it. Oh. You'd like that, wouldn't you? This isn't about a tree. This is about me. I'm on to you. And I'm warning you that this is a tree. I should know. I've seen it up close. And you better do something about this mess, because I'm not ready to go through this hell again. Enough already. I can't take another minute of this. Yeah, I've got to get out of here. Matthew, let's of go. Of course. That's father needs some time. It's a tree! Helen! Listen, pal. You have lived with the only woman that I have ever loved. And now you're blowing it. Good for you. Yeah. Helen! 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 Hey, Dusty. Hey. Mind if I join you? Sure. Unless I'm wrong, Ranger. This is the first time you've ever been in here. No offense, Billy, but your normal patrons and I just... I understand. Philosophical differences. Yeah. Tell you what. First one's on me. Thanks. So where is everyone? It's Christmas Eve. Right. So, uh, why the long face? It's Starla. I don't think she likes me. Oh. You found her cane for her, didn't you? By running it over with the truck, smashed it to pieces. Even Darla says she drives better than I do. Why can't I ever keep a girl? I don't know. You kept that one a couple years ago for nearly two days, didn't you, Dusty? Cut it out. How was I supposed to know she was, well, dead? <laughs> I just thought she was really shy. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. I'm calling it a night. <laughs> hey, Dusty. Just give her some time. When she sees the real you, she'll come around. She's blind, remember?
You know what, Dougie? What? It's Christmas Eve. Yeah. And I haven't even gotten you a gift yet. No. Why don't you guys uh, go down to the Santa display, and I'll catch up with you later. All right. And I want a pony. Whatever, kid. Get out of here. Okay, champ. This is it. One last chance to make a pitch for that gift you really, really want. Come on, I'm too old for that. Come on, kids, you're holding up the line. Hey, Matthew, you ready to sit on Santa's lap? Come on, yeah, kid. Come on. Oh, easy, kid. I'm not wearing a cup. I saved his life. <laughs> Dougie, wait! Dougie, help me! Dougie, help me! Help me! Help me! Billy, can you turn that up? The local high school gymnasium has been converted into a makeshift shelter for the victims of these tree attacks. They are bringing in the wounded one at a time, and at this point there seems to be no explanation for this bizarre occurrence. I must say I've never seen so much devastation in my life. I knew it. <laughs> what in the hell? Billy, no! Die, you sap-sucking son of a bitch! Oh, oh, oh. 
happened? Is Matthew all right? No, no, he was attacked by one of those, by one of the trees. Oh, God, Mark, you were right. You were right. You were right, Mark. Oh, God. Where the hell is Max? That looks like Dougie Styles' car. What, what do you think happened? I don't know. Do you think we should check it out? Yes. Let's go. I don't see anybody. I don't see anybody. I hope you made it back to town, okay? Poor guy. Got a fever. I think it's infected. Oh God! Oh God! How could I have left him with that coward? Helen, it's okay. Can you move? Oh, no. We've got to get this wound cleaned up fast. Can you move? Is it okay for us to move you? Oh, sit up. Oh. Are you okay? Are you okay? Come here, lean, lean against here. as an emergency center, but we got cornered here. My father, where is my daddy? Listen, I'm Agent Bentley, okay? Everything's gonna be all right. We just have to get you to the high school, okay? okay. How far is that? It's just down the road. All right, let's go. Oh my God, come on, hurry. Let's go, we gotta go now. Let's go out the store. Come on, get on here. Come on, come on. Oh, this cold. 
It's all right, man. It's okay. Stay with me. Come on. Let's go. Go, Bentley. Where's the gym? It's down here. I can't stop thinking about the pool. Let's worry about brush strokes later. <laughs> no, I mean the tree. Why did it give up so easily? Mm. Perhaps the water. Yes, of course. The chlorine. In a concentrated form, it acts as a defoliant. Why didn't I think of that before? That's why the roots lost their color. Hey, don't laugh. It's been years since I wore one of these things. How do I look? You look great. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> Max, we gotta go. Right. My father! Where's my daddy? Hey, don't worry about your daddy, honey. He knows how to take care of himself. Believe me. worse than I expected. And this time there are dozens of them. What the hell happened? We had a change. I'll explain later. Oh, Max, it's Matthew. He was attacked by one of those trees. Oh, no. Can you help him? Sap poisoning. Max, can you help him? I think so. If I can extract some sap from this live specimen of the root, I can create an antidote that will reverse the infection. Okay. Let's get him to a quiet area. You got him? Yes. Cody, this is unbelievable. I've never seen trees behave quite this way before. 
Bentley, could you hand me a scissor and tweezers? Thank you. I mean, their tree rooting patterns blow away any theory of tree migration I've ever seen. Okay, Bentley, I need you to boil this. Okay, sure. Max, what the hell are we gonna do? There's gotta be some logical way to deal with this. It's too late for that. The lumberjacks are already out in full force. That's like sending lambs to the slaughter. Come on, let's get it together, man! Yeah! And those trees from the highest, well, something. Yeah! Sons of Hazelville, I am Fang! But Fang is seven feet tall! I've heard. He kills trees by the hundreds! Yeah! And if he were here now, he'd consume these trees! Yeah! Like chainsaws from his eyes! And sticks the dynamite from his ass! Yeah! I am Fang! I see before me an army of fellow lumberjacks. Tonight we are united to show our enemies that they can take away our forests, but they can never take our axes! Yeah! Yeah! Shh, quiet! Listen! open. Let yourself in. It's horrible. The carnage. Ah, oh, yes, I know. Broward was a good man, if not a very good skier. Hey, maybe you'd like to be my intern now. No, it's not that. It's the Christmas trees. They're killing people in the streets. Who put you up to this? Was it Cody? Or maybe that nutcase Cooper? No, look. Apparently, the tree at the Hazelville Mall is not the only incident. Christmas trees from all over Hazelville are reportedly turning on the community. This is an unsettling repeat of last summer's attacks by a rogue great white pine. Oh, that's nothing to worry about. Here, sit down, relax for a while. Have a little wine. Now, you don't worry about that at all. I'm sure the authorities will have that well in hand real soon. Aren't you one of the authorities? Why, yes. As a matter of fact, I am. And I certainly seem to have you well in hand, don't I? Hazelville hospitality! We're definitely gonna get him. Junior! He's right here, he's right here. It's gonna be alright. Take good care of him. No, no, I promise. I've got him as if he was my own, I promise. No! No! No, don't go, Fang! I promise. Uh, what the? I can't. No! No! Oh, no! 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 
looks like he'll pull through. Just keep an eye on him, Cody. Dad! Oh, it's all right, Matthew. Everything's gonna be okay. Just get some rest. <laughs> Those trees aren't human. They're everywhere out there. They killed Fang. Fang? Oh, man, now what? We killed one in the swimming pool. Bentley's right. We smothered that tree to death. We can smother them all. Smother them? With a chlorine fog. We can use concentrated chlorinated water as a spray. If we can get enough of it on their pine needles, we can cut off their supply of carbon dioxide in the air, choking them to death. But the trees are everywhere out there. Yeah. I know, I know. We have to lure them out of their hiding places. Gather them together outside of town at the NFS quarantined area and destroy them all. But how do we draw them away from town? With bells. Sleigh bells. Lots of sleigh bells. Trees are attracted to very high-pitched noises. But how do we get past the trees? You know, I think I have an idea. This is so ridiculous. How did you ever talk me into this? Where's Max? All right, look, Bentley, I need you to stay behind to administer the serum. You're the only one that knows how. Listen, I just want to say that it's... Max, no. Too soon. Go. I'll take care of it. Go. There you are. Max, you all right? I'm fine. Let's do this. Keep 
Keep it going, keep it going. Concentrated chlorine. It's burning away her cataracts. She's looking at her eyes. Oh my god! I can see! I can see! I can see! Oh, that, it's a miracle! I can see! I can see. Oh, that's unbelievable! I can see! Wait, I can see. How many fingers? I can see! Two! Oh. Not that bad looking. Results grow. From tiny efforts, mighty 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 results grow. From tiny efforts. Come for the tree hugger. He will come with me now. No, I'm not gonna let you off. Uh.
You didn't think you'd seen the last of me, did you, Ranger? Christmas, Charlie Brown! You were dead. Where the hell you been all these months? I guess you could say I was a guest to those damn trees. But I saw that tree consume you. I was sapped, but not consumed. I was covered from head to toe in sap. What happened next? It was so unreal. I'm still trying to sort it out in my mind. I've been up in a cabin in the woods, living on berries and bugs. Oh my God, Max, I forgot. He's been sapped, too. Quick, let's go before it's too late. Dusty Petey, are you all right? A squint? I thought you were dead. Yeah, I get that a lot. Where's Max? A big lumberjack came and took him. I think it was Lafayette. Yeah, Lafayette. Lafayette. <sighs> Ranger, we got ourselves a real problem now. That's it. Yeah, boy, back at the middle. There they go. Cody to Dusty. Hey, this is Dusty. Dusty, we have a confirmed visual. We'll continue the track. Meet up at the rendezvous at 1800. Hey, those 
trees, you know, they come from the extraterrestrial void. I know they laugh behind my back, call me paranoid. I went to the library to find proof for my case against those assassin plants that conspired against our race. But as I sat studying late in the library one night, nothing happened so awful. I still slaughtered from fright. There from all the shelves, books were leaping down. I watched the stalking by his chuckles came from all around. They may be chopped down and pressed in a paperback. But if we want to stop those fiends, it'll take more than just an axe. I'm not gonna believe this. But now they're in the woods. with a nicer plastic fur. Killer trees coming to get me with the sadopsycho funk I cut no killer leaves. Killer trees more deadly than the angriest bee. Killer trees they even aggravate my allergies. Oh. Killer trees coming to get me with the sadopsycho funk I cut no killer leaves. Killer trees Killer leaves, killer trees, more deadly than the angry.